for more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com. YouTube.com slash channels web has videos for our shows. Also, watch channels television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app have an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. We're staying with the Eid al Fitri celebrations. Former military president Ibrahim Babangida believes President Mahmoud Buhari will fulfill his promise and tackle the security challenges in the country. General Babangida, however, wants the president to tackle the challenges decisively, as expressed in his message to Nigerians. General Babangida also asked Nigerians to remain peaceful and uphold the lessons learned during the Ramadan fast. He said this when a delegation from the state government visited him at his uphill residence in Mina, Niger State. Well, I think he made a promise, and I believe he will fulfill it. He said uh, that the security operation situation will be dealt with very decisively. This is the message he sent, and I, I trust he will do that. We are grateful to Almighty Allah for the completion of the month of Ramadan, and uh, I sincerely pray for this country, for the people of this country, and I will urge them to live in peace with one another, to avoid anything that will bring problem to the people and to the country. Let's examine further the significance of the Eid al Fitri celebrations. Let me join other news at 10 now from our Abuja studio by an Islamic cleric, Imam Sulaiman Aliyu. Uh, Welcome, Imam, and happy Eid al-Fitri to you. Thank you very much, Eid al-Mubarak. Eid al-Mubarak. So what does this season represent in terms of the lessons to be drawn from it? Alhamdulillah, summa salatu wassalamu ala rasulil kareem. The Ramadan fast uh, is uh, a lesson to teach uh, we Muslims uh, self-restraint from our everyday indulgence uh, uh, in pleasures and so on and so forth. So it teaches us uh, self-discipline, self-control, in order that uh, we should live uh, peacefully uh, among ourselves in the community. So thinking about others first before ourselves, uh, sharing, giving, God consciousness, all these and more is what Ramadan has come to teach us. How do we then reflect this on the country that we're in, uh, considering the challenges we're currently faced with? Uh, you know, when I said uh, Ramadan is here to teach us uh, self-discipline, you see, one of it is that um, it teaches us to control our greed, our inordinate desire. And if you look at all this, uh, most of this evil that is perpetrated in our country today, it's out of greed. Uh, inordinate, des inordinate desire for wealth, so everybody wants to get there by all means, uh, giving it whatever it takes. But if you can let go of your basic necess uh, necessity of life for about 29 or 30 days, that means you can let go any other thing that is not as important as that. So if you will learn self-control, if you learn self-sacrifice, like Allah said in one of the chapters of the Holy Quran, uh, Surah Al-Ashir, verse 59, that the righteous ones are those that prefer others over themselves, even though they themselves are in need, because they have been able to control their inordinate desire. So Allah says, those are the people, those are the group of people that will prosper. So if we can let go of our greed, like it is said, that we have uh, enough for our need, but we don't have enough for our greed. Mm -hmm. So if we can let go of our greed, all this evil that is being perpetrated in our community, in our society, will be reduced drastically. Imam Aliyu, thank you again for joining us on the News of 10 and Eid Mubarak to you and to your family and your congregation. Thank you very much. Thank you. In other news now, every year, civil rights activists in Nigeria remember the late Kudrat Abiola, wife of the late acclaimed winner 
of the June 12, 1993 presidential election, Moshud Kashimao Abiola, and what she stood for. This year is no different. A uh, non-governmental organization, Women Arise, has led a procession to honor her remembrance. Her children also remember the great times they had with, her mo with their mother before she was killed. 23 years ago, Kudira Sabiola was assassinated. And today, this political activist are here to celebrate the icon. An icon who believes that an electoral mandate given to her husband during the June 12, 1993 election could not be easily set aside. When we remember Kudira, what's our run away, we are you. The procession starts at her home. To where she was later arrested 23 years ago. The promise made by the federal government is a welcome development. You know, the government actually took the first step, which is an important step. You know, she's going to be put in the Hall of Fame as the martyr of Nigeria's democracy, which is why she died. She died in defense of Nigeria's democracy. So I think it's a very big step. But that's not enough. We need Kudirasa Biola to be immortalized through the naming of a national monument. Afset Abiola Castello believes the greatest honor her mother deserves is to have more women represented in politics. I think that the greatest monument to a woman that has died is to choose all these women that are alive and present, put them in cabinets all over Nigeria. Let every cabinet have 50% women, our strong women who are principled, who will fight for the poor, who will fight for the unemployed, who will fight for other women. Put them in positions of authority. Let the president set this example with his own cabinet that he will announce soon. Kudirata Biola was born in Zaria in 1951. She got married to Moshuda Biola at the age of 21. She was assassinated on the 4th of June 1996 while her husband was in detention for demanding the actualization of his mandate. Victoria Idowu, Channels Television News. We're back in Abuja now with Ibrahim Adra for more on the news at 10. Ibrahim, Id Mubarak. Hello, Marathi. It's good to know that you were celebrated peacefully in most, if not all, parts of the country. Thank you for joining us in Abuja. The Nigerian Police Force and the Importers Association of Nigeria have sealed up a company here in the nation's capital that engages in the manufacture of fake products. The police authorities say the movie is part of efforts to rid Nigerian market of fake and substandard goods. The company, owned by a Chinese and some Nigerian collaborators, specializes in the manufacture of electric bulbs and cables, which the Importers Association of Nigeria discovered to be fake and substandard. The acting director general of the association warns importers of fake products to desist from such act. And one of the allegations is that they, have, they are operating with fake trademark and design certificates. And from the documents with us, we found out that there was a report written by the Federal Ministry of uh, Trade and Investment confirming that this is a fake uh, certificate. And they are still operating with it, intimidating others that have the authentic ones. So that is why we came here. Let them come and clear it. Show us that the original certificate. We have a lot of reports from different uh, departments. A more cheering news now. Nigeria's permanent representative to the United Nations, Ambassador Tijani Mohamed Bandi, has emerged as president of the 74th UN General Assembly. Mr. Mohamed Bande, who was the sole candidate for the position, was elected at the 87th plenary meeting of the Assembly in New York today. He is the second Nigerian to hold the office after retired military officer Joseph Garba, who held the position from 1989 to 1990. Ambassador Mohamed Bande will in September take over from Maria Espinosa Garces of Ecuador, who was the 73rd president of the UNGA. President Mohamed Buhari appointed him as Nigeria's representative to the UN on March 31st, 2018. During her recent visit to Nigeria, Mrs. Garcis had hinted that the Nigerian would be elected to the UNGA presidency. 
To Kano State now, where the state's public complaints and anti-corruption commission has recommended the suspension of the mayor of Kano, Mohamed Sanusi II, over alleged misappropriation of Emirate funds and obstruction of the ongoing investigation. The executive secretary of the commission, Muhui Magaji, told our correspondent that it is necessary for the mayor to be suspended in order for the investigation to proceed. This, he says, is based on overwhelming evidence of Emir Sanusi's alleged involvement in illegal spendings of their merits funds. The Anti-Corruption Commission, in its recent findings summarized into a 19-page preliminary report, accuses the Kano Emirate Council under Emir Sanusi of five key allegations. They include 360 million in the provision of CCTV in the mayor's palace and suspicious transactions running into millions of naira, among others. The statement adds that a request has since been submitted to the Ministry of Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, copied to the Office of the Governor and all other relevant authorities. The Kano State Public Complaints and Corruption Commission has been investigating the mayor over allegations of unnecessary spendings of their merits funds to the tune of 4 billion naira. Meanwhile, a source close to their mayor told Channels Television that the Merit Council will not comment on the matter since it is already in court.